Making pinwheel black quilts is quick and easy, particularly if you have the right tools, like the twist and stitch ruler from June Taylor. Hi, I'm Jill Rupp, and I'm going to show you how to make this quilt plus several other projects using twist and stitch. Pinwheel quilts are comprised of two things, simple squares and border strips. The first thing you need to do is decide how big do you want that finished pinwheel square. In this quilt, it's three and a half inches finished. So our instructions say for a three and a half inch block, you need to start out by cutting five inch squares and three inch border pieces. The instructions will show you exactly what size squares to start out by cutting, depending on what size finished blocks you want from three and a half all the way up to ten and a half inch finished blocks. We also give you suggestions on what size blocks work with what size quilts from crib all the way up to queen. So we give you great recommendations on block layout and sizing. Let's get started. I cut five inch squares because I want the three and a half inch finished block. So the next step after you've cut your squares is to simply lay them all out like we're doing here. And then we're going to sew these together. We're going to cut our borders, add those on, and then we'll begin to see that pinwheel block come alive. So again, you just want to, here we'll change this around a little bit like this, get all your squares, sew them together, and then you're going to sew on your border pieces. You can sew top and bottom, and then you're going to add your left and right so that you're finished at that point looks like this. All of your squares sewn together and your borders on all four sides. Now we're ready to start making our pinwheel. Now it's time to cut our pinwheel blocks out of our squares and borders. We're going to take our twist and stitch ruler and wherever you see the X in the ruler, you're going to line that up with your seams. So here we're working up in the border square. I've got the two lines that crisscross on my seam lines. I make a cut at three and a half and three and a half because remember that's my finished square. Then I twist the ruler and I reline up my X on the other set of seam lines. And again, I make my cut at three and a half and three and a half. So let's take this block and set it out. We're always going to want to keep those blocks in order. Now we'll move on to the next block. I'm going to cut four total here so that you can see the whole process. Again, I cut in three and a half and three and a half. I twist my ruler and I cut again in my three and a half inch blocks and you're going to see these pinwheels start to form right in front of your eyes. I'll give you a little tip on this ruler. If you want a really super easy way to get your rotary cutter blade started into the slot openings of this ruler, you just want to tilt it ever so slightly. That helps introduce it into the slot and it keeps you absolutely square on as you cut. Now I'm twisting in the other direction. I'm lining up my X and again I'm cutting in that three and a half inch mark. There we go. And one last cut. I'll cut over here to show you. The X is lined up on my seam lines. I'm just twi tilting my blade ever so slightly to get it introduced into that slot opening. Twisting the ruler. It's actually a lot of fun and it's really easy to cut this out and you should see a pinwheel beginning to form here. So let's put this block here. Now, when all four are together like this, you are beginning to see your pinwheel block form and that's going to eventually expand out into your finished quilt. You can see as I'm cutting out my quilt, I have little squares that are left over. Save those because those can always be used for other blocks or if you are working with this ruler and you're making the largest size, the ten and a half inch size, the little squares that are left over will be perfect to make a little three and a half inch finish block as well. So there will be no waste using the twist and stitch ruler. The last step in the process is to sew all these blocks together, creating your pinwheels. That's what we've done here. And then all you need to do is add your binding and you're done. I wanted to show you two other things that are interesting to do with the twist and stitch ruler. You can actually make a border strip using the ruler. Again, we use that three and a half inch finished block. And to make the border strip, you simply start out by sewing your five inch blocks together 
adding your border pieces and then cutting it out and sewing it together. So that can make a really nice border strip on the edge of a quilt, particularly if you used a larger block for the inside and then the smaller block for the outside. The other thing that I love, one of my favorite things, is this little nine patch block using the twist and stitch ruler. So you can see in each one of these, this is a simple nine patch block. It starts out like this. You need four squares plus again your border strips. You want to cut them out, sew them together. This works beautifully for table runners. So four block sizes, finish three and a half up to ten and a half. The twist and stitch ruler is the perfect solution to make this type of quilt. Easy and fun.